Valiant 40 Tour, Part 2. Hello, I'm Patrick Childress on the sailboat Brickhouse. Welcome aboard. Today is Part 2 of the Valiant 40 Tour down below. So let's turn the cameras around. We'll go through the hatchboard and take a look. At one time, all the trim around the companionway was teak. Now it's very low maintenance polyethylene. Bottom washboard, that's also solid polyethylene. Very low maintenance, very sturdy. So let's go down below. We'll take a very quick tour of this Valiant 40, and then we'll come back and look at some of these items in much closer detail. On the right side, the starboard side, is a hanging locker for all the foul weather gear. And we also keep our flares in there. Just forward of that is the pantry with several shelves and very deep storage for lots of food storage. And on the port side is the aft cabin, which we often call just the bedroom. And the port side, of course, is the galley. And we'll come back and take a closer look at the galley in just a few minutes. On the starboard side is Rebecca's domain, the nav station. She installed a lot of these electronics and she maintains the electronics and she does all the navigating for us. Makes it easy for me. She just tells me to turn right, turn left, how far up ahead to go. And in the next video, she'll actually uh, do a little orientation on the electronics, what we have and uh, how useful they are. On the starboard side is a water tank under the cité. That one is about 60 gallons capacity. There's a tons of storage behind the backrest that go all the way out to the hull. And we have the stereo cabinet up here behind that white door. And then there's another 60 gallon water tank underneath this cité on the port side. And in the next video, I'll go through what we did to save these aluminum tanks. They were very heavily pitted and it was going to cost a fortune to rip these out and try to fit something else in. So we have a remedy that has worked for all these years and we'll go into that next video. Up here on the left is even more storage. And there's also lots of ventilation in this boat, lots of hatches and port lights. So we really don't need um, wind directors to force more air through these hatches. This is a hanging locker on the starboard side and more closed storage in shelves just forward of that. On the port side is the head. It's just the right size. It's not too big, not too small, so we're not too cramped. Some people have problems with their Japs go toilet. Uh, we just don't have problems with ours. And I have a few tips I think that might help you out, which we'll cover in the next video. But I like the size of this head. Uh, we have a shower curtain that goes around to contain water when we're taking a shower. It has all the amenities that we need to be comfortable on this boat. Stored up forward is the Barracuda sewing machine. Very similar to the sail rate. A lot of the parts are interchangeable and the V berth is not for personal storage this is where all kinds of parts and supplies are stored stainless steel nuts and bolts fiberglass fiberglass resin glue all kinds of extra stainless steel parts are stored up in these shelves sandpaper tools you name it so we are pretty self-sufficient out here if something should break and the same for the storage up here on the starboard side in all these shelves. And away up in the chain locker, we'll get to that in the next video. We have 150 feet of chain that we store up there. And then in that PVC tube that comes out of that is, a, is where the other 150 feet of chain goes to down below the V-berth. We like to keep as much chain as low and aft as possible. to the hanging locker and uh, we'll get started there. Oh, there's one other thing I forgot to mention. We'll also be taking a look at the main bilge pump underneath this floorboard. And we'll take a look at the emergency electric bilge pump that is much farther forward, way up underneath one of these floorboards. And of course we have the high capacity hand operated bilge pump in the hanging locker. 
Normally we try to dry the gear before it goes into this locker, but even if it did go in here wet, any water would just drip down into the bilge, work its way there. There's a nice big shelf up here, another shelf a little further down, plenty of storage space, and this is also where we keep all of our flares and emergency signaling equipment. This is also where the emergency hand-operated bilge pump is located. What was in this space originally was a Whale Gusher 25. It wasn't installed properly. The discharge went directly out over the side of the boat without a high loop. So it's very easy for seawater or rainwater just to back right down that hose, that discharge hose, and settle inside of the pump. A proper discharge loop starts at the discharge through hull, going out the side of the boat, and then goes up just as high as possible. Before it goes back down to the pump. So when I went to rebuild this, it was so heavily corroded inside, it just wasn't repairable. So we replaced it with a very high capacity Edson pump. It's a tremendous pump. It'll pump one gallon per stroke if I had two inch hoses on there. But because of area restrictions in the hose run, I could only put in one and three quarter inch hoses. So it's a little bit less than one gallon per stroke. On the discharge side, I have a very high loop but also one of these see-through check valves. Certainly it's not the best idea to have a check valve in any kind of a discharge uh, bilge pump, but at seawater, no other water is gonna be backing up and just sitting in this pump. It's going to be fully functional if we ever need it. Down here is where all the water in the boat collects in a stainless steel sump that measures six inches by eight inches across. So it's a very tight squeeze putting the pump and the float switch in here but it can squeeze it out take it all apart and clean it out occasionally because muck does at times keep the uh, float from going up and down properly is over here this is the sump discharge from the shower so the shower pan goes through that green pipe and comes out into the sump here and then gets pumped overboard the important part though is to put a screen on the end of that discharge otherwise you get all of this muck the hair the soap scum everything it would go into the sump and help to clog up the pump so this way we capture it in the screen I can take it out dump it into the garbage can wash out this little plastic screen and then slip it back on keep all that hair and gunk from clogging up the most important bilge pump on the boat now I'll take you up forward and show you the emergency backup bilge pump that has never seen water and hopefully it never will. You know, the forward bilge area, this is an area that just never should ever get wet. So water has to get in this bilge up to this float switch, of course, before it'll finally turn on. So that's pretty darn high in this bilge area. And when it does turn on, we have that loud alarm This is the largest bilge pump I could possibly fit in this area. And you can see there's no way that I could attach it at the base like you normally would. It's held in place with this PVC pipe that I just cut a section out of to make a ring. That hole slips over the top. And then this PVC horizontal piece is attached to that ring. And then to each side is a vertical piece attached to the frame of the boat. To finish up in the hanging locker, this is where we store the hatch boards. We have these two teak twist locks that securely hold them in place. And then the hatch screens get stuffed on the far side of those and they're wedged in nice and securely. And this is the pantry. It goes way back in here. This is the single sideband radio. And of course the control head for that radio is at the nav station. Next shelf down is more food and then the very bottom shelf is a lot of hand tools which are always getting used they're in a very convenient spot along with over here in the galley we have all these drawers but this drawer is dedicated not to silverware well the silverware that I like to use more than all the other 
because we're always using all kinds of screwdrivers. So the Phillips head are on that side and the flat heads are on this side. These are always being used. I can't be digging out things from the engine room or some other storage space hand all the time. Now one thing I changed very quickly on this boat were these little finger holes with the latch behind. I could only imagine my finger breaking out in the middle of an ocean. And in fact, a commenter on one of the earlier videos on galley tips said that's exactly what happened to him. He was reaching in to unlatch the door, the boat hit a wave, and his finger broke 90 degrees. In anticipation of something like that happening, I did away with those latches and I installed these twist lock latches up here. I'm actually surprised that they've lasted over 12 years now. This is 2019, but just as a backup, we have this little latch down here. In fact, in rough weather, when things might be coming out and slamming against the door, we always put on these extra security latches. At the top of the door to help hold these open, especially in rough weather, are these springs. So it, the door can't close, whoosh, and now it'll close easily so we don't have to fight with the door out on the ocean. So to close the hatch, you just pop the spring, comes down real quick and easy. Any water that becomes a waterfall down this companionway, which has happened out in bad storms, will come down and eventually work its way down to this grating and then just simply runs down into the bilge. Another great idea. Oh, hey there, Lily. She just woke up from her little hiding spot way in the back of the boat. I really like the layout of this aft cabin. Underneath this cushion is the V drive and the transmission, so it's very accessible. This white panel pulls out. And up here is the storage cabinet. Shark. And the bunk is six feet, 10 inches long and four feet wide. The only problem that I can really see is this side deck in this location the person sleeping on the outside can have a little difficulty crawling over the person on the inside but that could be a nice thing underneath this area it's all storage it is full of stuff all kinds of spares there's no personal storage here there's all kinds of electrical supplies wires in the back section is the hot water heater the regulators for the hookah and the scuba tank are stored way down in here. Just all kinds of repairs and spares. And of course, way down underneath here are the batteries. We have six Trojan batteries, golf cart batteries. One day I'd like to get caught up with modern technology and get some lighter batteries that have equal, if not more, amperage capacity. I like the way the galley is laid out and actually it's the nice close u-shape so you can't really bang around too far you can always brace yourself against something while you're working around the galley it's a really good idea also on this boat we have a galley strap so we can lean against it while we're cooking or at another position we can actually lean forward and keep from being thrown into the stove. These countertops are solid plastic. It was originally for mica, and this work was done in Cartagena, Colombia by a man named Edder, who does a lot of this work, and he did a pretty good job. It isn't Corian quality, but it's the next best thing, and for $1,000 for doing everything here, I think we got a pretty good deal. This is a soap dispenser. This is freshwater foot pump, salt water foot, foot pump, and this is the product water for the reverse osmosis system that we never use. We just don't need it. We get all of our fresh water from the faucet on shore, from the rain, and sometimes a very clear stream. But for washing dishes, we use the salt water. We rinse in salt water and then rinse in the fresh water. We hardly ever use the pressure water. We only use the pressure water really at the sink occasionally because we have a filter down below to filter the water that comes out of the fresh water tank. And um, Rebecca likes to use that. I'm not nearly as fussy about the water I drink. And back here is a big storage bin. 
way down to the bottom of the boat all kinds of pots and pans. We don't have anything out here because I tried to clean up for our company and threw it all down here to hide it out of the way, like throwing it under the carpet. Yeah, we don't normally live like this. And over here is the refrigerator. And we have the freezer here. It goes down very deep. Normally, we keep these exercise mats on top of the refrigerator to help with insulation. A lot of this is covered in video number 22, which is uh, galley tips. And you'll also get a very good look way down inside of the freezer, how we defrost it, and the things that we put in there to help aid the airflow in the freezer. Uh, also in video number 20 about provisioning, we go through a lot of these lockers, pull things out, and show a lot of different foods and uh, how to store items on your boat and what to buy what not to buy while you're out cruising long distance there's tons of storage back here Bob Perry did a great job of using all the storage capacity on this boat and I'll show you more of it as we move around these cabinets are full of dishes and uh, cups all kinds of silverware so we're not lacking at all for storage capacity well I hope other people have had better luck with their gourmet two princess stove than what we have had we installed the stove in 2012. Right from the get-go, we had problems with rust. It was rusting just way too fast. And then up on the burners, there was always a yellow flame. And the company just wasn't that helpful with us trying to figure it all out. But eventually, after trying so many different things, we discovered that it was the caps that were not manufactured quite right. And so when we got new caps and put those on at our own expense through a different source, that took care of the yellowed flame, and now we have some nice blue flames the way they were supposed to be. The original pot supports for this stove seemed like in no time they started flaking off hunks of rust. So we had to have new ones made out of 304 stainless, and these are holding up far better. Sinks. This sink on the port side was originally made far too deep. Seawater would back up through the drain hole and flood the sink when we were just slightly heeled over to the port. When this sink was about 38 years old, I just couldn't patch it up anymore on the bottom. It was just rusting through so much that in Davao City, Philippines, we had this one made to replace it. And I only made it about an inch and a half less deep. I probably should have gone to two or maybe even three inches less deep just to make sure that we are well above the water line, but it's been adequate. But this is simple to make. The old one actually I cut out with an angle grinder. Starting from one side, worked down the bottom, brought up. It was very simple to do and then just took it out. Um, and the people at the sheet metal shop used that as the template for making this new one. So it was very simple to make with the curved sides and the very flat back and the flat front. And it does have the flanges on each side for mounting up underneath. The sink on the starboard side of the galley this is 43 years old now and it's rusting on the bottom. I haven't had to patch it up just yet, but uh, when we haul out in Durban, South Africa in a couple of months, we'll have a new one made there. The sink on the port side was, was 304 stainless. Hopefully in Durban they'll have some 316 stainless to make this new sink. Well, once again, time has really gotten away from me. I just keep seeing more and more things to point out as we go through the boat. So certainly there's going to be a part three, part four, maybe even a part five. We'll just keep it going until we run out of boat. Hey, but thanks a lot for all of the positive comments that you have been making. That's great encouragement to keep doing what we're doing. Also, of course, if you can click on the thumbs up button down there, and especially the subscribe if you haven't done already, that'll be a big help. So thanks again, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks for the next part of the Valley 40 Tour down below.